If this were an HBO series instead of a YouTube channel, it might start with one of those adult content warnings. Because today we're going to deep dive into some serious food porn. If you've ever been to Bangkok, maybe you've seen it along the side of a road or deep in some market, or if you've ever stumbled into a working class food court. And if you haven't been here before, well, you're in for a treat. Imagine a table covered in trays serving everything from your wildest Southeast Asia fantasies. Curries and stir fries and meats and vegetables, bold and vibrant colors, and the smells reminding you why wars were fought over the spices of this part of the world. But even if you have seen it, maybe you've never actually had the courage to dive in. This is not made for tourists or foreigners. There are no menus, you don't always know what you're getting, and the idea of all of this unrefrigerated food can be seriously intimidating. But that's why we're here. Today, we're going to take you inside the style of food known as cow gang. This is the single largest sector of the Thai food economy. If you want to know how the people of Bangkok actually eat, this is the answer. Oh, nice. Ah, love it. Here are the basics first. Khao Gang literally means rice with curry. Of course, in practice, it's become a much broader category. But basically, it means a whole bunch of stuff that can be served with rice and brought home to feed a family or taken away for a quick working lunch. Sometimes it's just a street cart serving only one thing, in Bangkok usually something like a spicy green curry, sold in single portions in a plastic bag with some rice for maybe 60 or 70 cents. Then you have places like here, at Or Tour Core Market, where a bunch of cooks might combine their street carts into one business and you end up with something like this. It's ridiculously photogenic and just an absolute embarrassment of riches. It's Thailand on a table. But it's also pretty overwhelming and just serves as a reminder for a foreigner of how much we still have to learn. Ortour Core is a pretty amazing market. It's the most popular wet market for visitors to Thailand, with countless tourists arriving every day to see the bounty of Thai food. And when people round the corner and enter the Khao Gang section, you can literally hear the oohs and ahs as they see this kind of spread for the first time. But our mission today is to actually understand this stuff. So for that, we're starting at another market, just after sunrise. Khlong Doi is the largest wet market in Thailand and one of the biggest in the world. It's where everyone in this city comes when they're looking for food. But we're not going to the market itself. We're going to a tiny alley across the street. This is the market's food court. And here is where the vendors themselves come to grab a quick meal, then go back to work. So let's get the elephant in the room out of the way first. This is a whole lot of food that's sitting out without refrigeration. And it took me a while as an American schooled on proper restaurant hygiene when I came to Asia to not freak out at the idea of eating stuff like this. But if you skip this stuff out of fear when you come here, you're missing out. There's no scientific consensus on the safety of food served this way. And a lot of people have passionate arguments on both sides. So I'm just gonna say what people here would say about it. First of all, everything's cooked through. There's nothing raw on the table. There's no dairy or anything that can spoil quickly. Some of the techniques used, like slow cooking or sun drying, serve as preservatives that keep food from going bad. Most of these dishes are spicy, and chili at least supposedly is something that keeps things fresh. And people here would argue that cooking something and then cooling it down and then heating it up again is worse both for your health and for the flavor of the food than simply making it fresh and serving it until it runs out. I don't know how much of that stuff is true, but Thai people take food safety very seriously too. And there's a reason a lot of Khao Gang places are only open for a few hours every day. Stuff gets made fresh, then sold out, and that's it. 
Almost all of the places that you see around me in this alley will be closed for the day by the time we get in our car and go to the next location. Anyway, I'm not a scientist. All I can tell you is I eat this stuff all the time and I feel just as safe here as I would eating in my own restaurants. So, the interesting thing about Khao Gang is that during COVID, it was actually really good for places like this because street food was outlawed and a whole lot of Khao Gang counters are, are, are street carts and might only serve one or two dishes. But uh, takeaway restaurants and places like this where there's uh, stalls that sell a whole bunch of food that are not on the sidewalk blocking the street. Uh, they were allowed to continue business during the time of COVID. And so um, uh, because street carts were prohibited, but the other places were allowed to open, what would happen was you'd get these clusters of uh, a few families or neighbors that are, that are all cooking different dishes meant to be served over rice, and they would join forces together and actually open a restaurant. And, uh, and, and so you know, e even though some of the places that we're going to go to today are, are close to 100 years old, actually the idea of cow gang restaurants or places serving you know, big clusters of food like what we just saw here. Uh, it's fairly new, you know, and, and it's still continuing to grow and develop. It, it's even more now than you would have found if you'd come to Bangkok two or three years ago. Uh, I'm going to get back to eating. So Khao Gang is, by definition, a very broad category of food. This style of rice with everything is very Bangkok, but the components might come from anywhere. The vendor I bought from here at Klong Doi is from the south of Thailand, so I picked two dishes, pad sataw or stir-fried stinky beans with shrimp and ground pork, and a thick and hearty Penang curry. But it's just as common to find Khao Gang stands here selling northern stuff like Chiang Mai style Nam Prik or classic Bangkok dishes like green curry. In fact, green curry might be the only thing that's pretty standard across all Khao Gang counters. You'll very rarely see this kind of place without green curry, either with chicken or fresh made fish balls. There's also almost always a pile of something dark and crumbly, usually topped with salted egg. This is actually dried and fried catfish mixed with chili and it's just awesome. Figuring out that I could always count on these two staples was my start to unlocking Khao Gang. But to find out more, we'd need help. So we invited one of Thailand's top food writers to join me at my personal favorite Khao Gang counter to tell us more. I was very American for a long time, so this kind of food was intimidating to me, which is why I wrote my first guidebook to street food because I wanted, I mean, I figured other people would be intimidated by this too. Yeah, you're just like, wait, if I just point, do I get something like, you know, really gnarly? Or, yeah. I mean, you know, you want to know what you're eating. A few people are just brave enough to be like, well, 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 you know, I'll take it all. If somebody were to, you know, see a typical Khao Gang counter, and this is, this is a really good example of one, and they're not all going to have the same stuff, but what, what are the things that you look for as dishes that you recognize? You typically see uh, stir-fried catfish, something with a lot of bamboo shoots in it, um, like a red curry, like this looks like a Penang some more bamboo shoots, always some stir-fried noodles, and uh, and something with a lot of Thai eggplants, always a green curry. And if you're really lucky, you get some sweet pork or some salted pork. Another thing that this place has that's really special are the num prik, the, um, the relishes. They've got two, which which is also kind of blows my mind because that stuff is time-consuming to make, so when it's like, early in the morning you've got to get all this stuff ready i mean somebody had to get all this stuff ready at like before it was light out they they took the time to make numpik makam a tamarind chili dip and a numpik which is a northern thai uh, minced pork relish you don't find that uh almost anywhere at any kalkan place okay can we order yes Talk me through everything 
got um, oh, okay. on the table. Okay, so the, my, my favorite thing that I've seen so far is the Kai Ken Pucha, which is a salted egg yolk with like, I believe this is a, a minced pork and crab mixture, and then the son-in-law eggs. And I think the, the theory behind it was that these eggs, which are like son-in-law eggs, <laughs> Your son-in-law's eggs are are deep fried and then uh, candied, which is what will happen to your son-in-law if he cheats. <laughs> All right. This is a tamarind chili relish, uh, which I love, and it, it's very hard to find at a, a typical uh, curry rice place. So I'm super excited about that. This is also hard to find, which is the cassia leaf curry with uh, chicken, I believe. The salted pork and the sweet pork because that appears to be their most popular dish. Everybody orders it here. Uh, the roasted chicken, which is a weird thing to have because it looks like a Western dish, but I see here it's got some, it's a kind of fusion-y mix of fermented brown bean sauce and some morning glory. So that's cool, I'm excited. And a clear broth soup with uh, stuffed bitter melon with uh, minced pork and I ordered that because when you have rice you should have a nice clear soup to help the grains go down easily. The son-in-law egg is the big revelation of the day for me from what I've tried so far. Mm -hmm. This is awesome and I think that might be, it's like a sweet soy with tamarind kind of glaze if I had to guess. Yeah. Um, am I completely oh. crazy or is that? No, you're not crazy, you're right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, that is that is really next level good. As a, as a person who doesn't look Thai at all, uh, I find, especially in a place like this, mm -hmm. that when I walk in, I usually get an extremely uh, welcoming reaction. Like. Mm -hmm. They're so excited and, and seem really surprised, you know, when I come in here and order, because I think, as you said, this is a little bit intimidating to a lot of foreigners. This yeah. isn't the kind of thing that, that, you know, there is no menu with an English translation That's where you can right. scroll through and read it. And so I find this is, is a really more than the average of a positive experience of yeah. eating here for me, because you walk in and you feel like, not only am I incredibly happy to eat the food here, but they seem you know, happy to have me as well. Yeah. And I think it's nice to show like a little bit of respect to people who are making some amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah and, and working, you know, their butts off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, lots of respect. Do you think we have enough food? <laughs> I don't know. If we run out, we can, we can get more, I suppose. Mayon's cow gang has been open for about 20 years. But before that, it was just a counter serving these dishes on the street, and that goes back about half a century. So now let's imagine that it's 50 years ago. Thailand is just emerging from the rice shortages that plagued the country starting during the Second World War. We talked about this in our video about how Pad Thai was created. But now the rice shortages are over and people are beginning to rediscover their old family recipes and vendors start flocking to the streets in the 1970s, serving their old favorite home-cooked dishes. There was a boom in popularity in anything served with rice once the rationing ended, particularly dishes like curries, which could finally once again be considered the national pride of Thailand. And it wasn't just street vendors that started selling their family recipes of curry with rice around that time. Some were full-service restaurants too, especially in more affluent sections of Bangkok. And maybe the best of those from that point in time is this place, Sangwan Sri. Opened in 1970 by a Thai grandmother who ran the place until she died 13 years ago at the age of 100. She didn't have any heirs left to leave the business to, so her staff just kind of kept showing up. They never stopped coming to work, and they're still here now. Miss Sangwan Sri might not recognize the street anymore. The restaurant's now in the middle of the embassy district in what's become one of Bangkok's posh communities. And she might be surprised to see the Michelin sign on the doors here. But everything else, right down to the plates and the cutlery, 
is exactly as she might have left it. So it's, it's a really lucky thing that we came here on a Tuesday uh, because they have a different menu every day. I mean, some of the things are staples that they have all the time. The green curry is always on the menu. Uh, I love the stir-fried kale with, um, with crispy pork belly, uh, which is very much like a Chinese Thai thing. Uh, the influences in this place are super interesting because like, the, the, the reason why I bring up Tuesday is that's the day that they have my favorite thing that they serve here, uh, which might be the best curry I've ever had. In, in Bangkok, which is a huge statement, but this is the red curry with uh, duck, and um, yeah, that's only served on Tuesdays here. That's imperial Thai. That's that's a straight up like palace dish from the 1800s. More popular overseas actually than, than in Bangkok. You don't see it super often here. This is very Chinese Thai, the stir fried kale with crispy pork, and then you've got your Khao Gang staples, the Nam Prik and the green curry. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, this is this is Khao Geng. It's not all of it sitting on a counter where you can see it. It's prepared in a kitchen and you still have their takeaway. I mean, look how many people are just coming in to pick up their stuff for, for lunch here to take away. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, like, when I come here, it sort of feels like uh, this would have been in the 1960s, you know, a, a, an upscale version of the humble Khao Geng counter. And, um, you know, it, it's, it shows you how this is something that serves, you know, a cross-section of the Thai population. It's not just a quick um, uh, takeaway lunch. In a place like this, it almost feels like it's uh, uh, kind of similar to like a Hong Kong cha tsun thing. Like, uh, you'll see, you know, old men sitting here for hours reading the newspaper. Uh, no one's in a rush when they come here, uh, except for us, because we have a few more meals we've got to eat today. <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna dive in. I'm I'm so excited to be here on a Tuesday and have this uh, the red curry with duck again. So to sum up, cow gang is a broad category that can encompass anything served over rice, from imperial curries to humble stir fries. It's usually meant to be taken away and eaten at home or at work but it can also include some amazing full-service restaurants. It's a very Bangkok style of eating, but it also has foods from all over Thailand. And it's had two separate explosions in popularity, once during the aftermath of the rice shortages of the mid 20th century, and again just recently during COVID lockdowns. There are countless Khao Gang restaurants in Bangkok serving amazing food at low prices. But to finish this video the right way, we had to go to the one place that stands alone, at least as the place with the longest lines. Jack Pui is the most famous cow gang spot in the entire world. It's been beloved locally since the end of the 1960s, but then the secret got out when it became one of two Bangkok restaurants showcased on a Netflix series about the world's best street food. Now, Jack Pui is popular, but it still serves its plates of curry and rice exactly how they've always done. Line up for takeaway, sit down for dine-in. There aren't even tables here, just some stools in an old alley. Wave down the boss and make an order. There are dozens of incredible dishes here, but the most famous is their yellow curry with pork. And locals will tell you, the right way to order here if you arrive right when it opens before they sell out, is to get a plate of rice with yellow curry and some sliced Chinese sausage. Coming here down a back alley might feel like finding some amazing secret. But maybe the biggest secret is the fact that there's a place like this almost everywhere in Bangkok. In a wet market, working class food court, down almost every street, even in the heart of the city. In a city famous around the world for its dazzling array of awesome food choices, it would make sense that even the most basic fast food lunch would be something that includes a dazzling array of awesome food choices. And even though I'd been eating all morning and afternoon, I still had dinner to think about. And in the city of Khao Gang, you're never far away from something cheap and perfect to bag up and take home. Subscribe to the channel for more food content and follow the links in the description to find us on Instagram or Facebook.